It was beautiful and I knew it. And it was at that moment the Lord spoke to me. I didn't hear voices. But bottom line is I, what I heard was, Hello, and welcome to Kept in Her Heart, where we talk about all things faith-related. I'm your host, Jenny Fuchs. Today, Mark joins us. He's a cradle Catholic who spent a lot of time active in the church, but not active in his faith. And you're going to hear about how that changed for him. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Jenny. Yeah. Can you tell us about kind of your faith journey? Well, as you said, I was a cradle Catholic. I always went to church, went to Catholic grade school, Catholic high school, Catholic college. <clears throat> was very active, uh, was involved with the altar servers, uh, youth, youth choir, youth group. Um, however, there was always a, uh, I never took my faith to the next step. I always resisted. Uh, there'd be youth group retreats, there'd be, even when I was older, there would be men's retreats and I would just avoid them like, at all cost. I didn't, I didn't want to go to that next step. That would be scary. So I avoided all that. But even continuing on in life, I married, have five children, and we've always been active in the faith, active at church, volunteering many multiple different ways, always enjoyed it. But I never took the next step until there was an event where my children were going to youth events and there was a mission trip, a mission trip, Steubenville trip and to St. Louis and one of the adult male chaperones backed out at the last moment. Oh, no. So the youth counselor knew that I was kind of played the role of Mr. Mom so knew I was home and she literally begged me for two weeks to fill the role and I resisted again. I resisted and resisted. Finally, at the last minute, I gave in, and as I expected, <laughs> it, was, it was hard. I don't like long, grueling bus rides, and there was long, grueling bus rides, and you don't get much sleep. You're sleeping on classroom floors, et cetera, but then halfway through, halfway through that week, it was a week-long experience. I, I was laying on the classroom floor one night trying to sleep with all the events that had happened swirling in my head, including all the kids, working with all the kids, and it was just, it was beautiful and I knew it. And it was at that moment the Lord spoke to me. I didn't hear voices, but bottom line is I, what I heard was, this is what it's about. And it, it changed, changed me in so many ways. When, it, when I returned, I was on fire, and it, it just continued to blossom to many different things. My work in the, in the pro-life movement and my um, just everything. I, I don't even know how to describe it. it. It it changed me greatly and I really am glad that I listened and said yes even though it was a, a resisting. Yeah. So did, was, it a, was it a quick change for you, like going forward? So you come back, you're on fire, and it's easy to be on fire maybe when you get back from something cool like Steubenville, right? right? But um, after a while, maybe that wears off. So was it, did, did the fire stay with you, or did maybe it cool down for a while and, and it took a while for you to kind of get over that uh, resisting habit that maybe you'd been in? It was gradual, and I wish I could say I'm one with the resisting habit, and I'm not. <laughs> I, it's... it's uh, Reachmore was a program that I was asked to be a part of, and I almost resisted that. If it hadn't been for the personal friendship I had with one of the leaders, I would have said no to that as well. But through that, I grew even more. And every, every time I've said yes, I've grown, and I should know by now, but adoration's another example. I've always said I'll never do adoration. It was just, I, I don't know, scary, intimidating to me, mm -hmm. you name it. I, I've literally told people I will never do adoration, and now I'm doing it, and I absolutely love it. And there's a little backstory to that as well. Uh, in Reachmore, one of, the, one of the founding tenets of that is you've got to find time for personal prayer. Yeah. And I had my routine. I love my routine. My routine was I get up in the morning, do some chores or whatever, and read the newspaper. That was my morning chore. So, so I said, I, I don't know when I'm going to find time to pray because if I don't do it in the morning, my days always get so twisted and busy, I never find time. And I said, I, I don't know how that's going to happen. Well, it wasn't more than a couple weeks later, and suddenly my newspaper stopped showing up. And I was so hooked on it, I would, 
I would call them and I would complain and this went on for over a month and they just couldn't seem to get me a newspaper and finally out of frustration after reading the newspaper faithfully for 40 years and that was part of my morning routine, I said, that's it, I'm, I'm quitting it. So I quit the newspaper and I started daily prayer and now I don't miss the paper and now I do miss my daily prayer if I don't do my daily prayer. So it's little stories like that. that That's <laughs> awesome. Sometimes God has to just give us a little extra nudge. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's awesome. So what does your, your morning prayer routine look like? What do you enjoy doing for a morning prayer? Uh, it varies, but most of the time what, what it is is I uh, start with the daily readings. I just start there and you know it depends upon the day I, I wish i could say i'm there where i spend a solid half an hour an hour a lot of times it doesn't look like that sometimes it's 15 minutes 20 minutes sure. but i truly do feel odd if i don't do my daily prayers now so yeah and it, do you find that there's more peace when you do do them absolutely and that's what adoration's brought adoration's brought just a very I don't, I don't even know how to describe it, a calming sense. And, but I still resist, and that's the funny part about it is every t single morning I've got the 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. hour. Mm. So every time Thank that you. alarm goes off at 3.30 a.m. in the morning, I cringe and I go, what am I doing? But I can honestly say to anybody, uh, when, I, when I'm driving home, I'm like flying on cloud nine every single time. You'd mm. think, you would think that I would understand that by now, that by getting up early and enjoying it, but I still cringe every time I get up in the morning, but it's beautiful, so. That's awesome, yeah, that's that sort of, uh, when St. Paul talks about that kind of crucifying the flesh, like the flesh doesn't want to get up in the morning. <laughs> Amen. Even if the soul wants it. <laughs> yeah, what would you say to people that maybe are where you were, um, you know, in, in, or maybe, maybe are a little still, right? In that resisting and I don't want to grow in my faith life or I just don't even know how to start. Like, what would you recommend? It, it sounds so easy and I get how hard it was because I did it for so long. It's you have to say yes at some point in time. You have to say yes. It's that first little step, little side story on that. When we were new to the St. Patrick's, um, we didn't know anybody. And one, one day they were moving a shed around on the grounds and I said, well, there's something I could help with. Yeah. And I didn't know anybody and I went there. I was somewhat timid and intimidated by it, but by just saying that one yes, the next Sunday, well, then there's five guys who greet you. Nice. And it just, it just opens up so many doors and it's just, I can't, I can't explain, emphasize enough the peace it's all given me. I'm, I'm far from perfect. <laughs> I've got a lot of things to work on, but it, the sense of peace from adoration and from living your faith more is just... Yeah. Joy as well, I imagine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Have your, have your family noticed any, any difference? Have they ever commented on any changes? I, I think so. I mean, they know... They haven't outright commented on it per se, mm -hmm. but I think they know. Yeah. It's, it's evident. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I appreciate you sharing your story with me. That's wonderful. Thank you. And, uh, and thank you guys for watching. I hope that you've um, got inspired to grow in your faith, just like Mark did. And uh, if you want to hear more exciting stories of, of faith stories, vocation stories, and other similar content, make sure you like and subscribe. Leave us a comment, and we will see you on the next video.